Hi everyone, I'm Clément Gers, I'm a French doctor and a visiting researcher here at Stanford. My name is Oliver Lamy and Clément's going to start us off, so I'm going to take a quick seat. Yeah, and we have been working with Dr. Lamy and sim 4 Ors and something really exciting we are, we are going to, to show you. Um, but I, I would like to start with a question. What does these two pictures have in common? What does aeronautics and healthcare have in common? Well, one answer could be that in both cases, if the pilot or the health professional make a mistake, some people might die. But there are more similarities than that. In both cases, we are talking about teamwork. In both cases, we are talking about managing complex systems. And in both cases, sometimes you have little to no time to take a decision. You have to deal with emergencies. And since, since we are here to talk about medical education, the next question should be, how do we train our pilot? and how do we train our med students. So let's take a look. For the pilots, well, they learn a lot in books. And then they go to a flight simulator, and they do hundreds and hundreds of hours of training. And then they go to an actual airplane, and they fly it. OK, so pretty clear here. Books, simulator, airplane. What about the med students? Well, <laughs> they are learn a lot in books, and then, bam, go see a patient. So maybe we, we start to see a little gap here. Um, of course, we, as doctor, we have to learn. Nothing bad about that. Someday, sooner or later, we are going to face patients. And nothing will ever re replace a natural patient. But now, with all the technology we have, can't we make something between books and patients? I think we can, and I think we must. And this is we, what we have been working on. This is the Medic Active platform. Um, we will show you an example uh, in one minute. Um, but basically, the Medic Active platform is a platform to do virtual clinical cases. What is a virtual clinical case on Medic Active? Well, it's an interactive exercise when you can go, and it allows you to practice your skill again and again and again, like on a simulator. And you can make all the mistakes you want and learn from them, but without hurting anyone. I'm going to make you a confidence. I've been trained in Paris, in some of very good hospital, and each time I did something for the first time, it was on a patient. For instance, take a lumbar puncture. I remember very well my first lumbar puncture, and I remember very well feeling completely unprepared. But most important, I felt very bad for the patient. So we're gonna sh I'm sure you all want to see the medical act active platform. So um, Oliver, maybe we can show what we have been working on. Thank you, uh, Clement. So I just want to echo uh, what Clement is saying, I, as a vascular surgeon uh, in, in the academic setting, we train residents, medical students, fellows, and I experience this every day, but I'm on the teaching end. I'm supposed to guide these students through uh, invasive procedures every day. And that can be very stressful, especially because I feel for the patient. I don't want, I, I hate complications, and it's uh, not good for the patient at all. So we, I, I thought a good example for a uh, simulation would be to address ultrasound-guided vascular access. There are millions of these done 
every year in the United States, and it's for venous access, either in the ICU, ER, or arterial access for procedures, and that's the setting for us. So what we did is we put together a module uh, where a patient comes in with an abdominal aortic aneurysm, he's surveyed, so the student who's going through the mod module learns about abdominal aortic aneurysms, what are the indications, and uh, eventually there's a, a really fun interactive uh, virtual reality ultrasound guided access uh, module, and then uh, we actually do the procedure. So I'm going to go ahead and start first. This is the initial encounter where the patient comes in and sees you in the office, and um, you have to pick the first encounter, and you, you just have your conversation, you go, uh, you talk about really the questions that you would ask a normal patient who comes in for a surveillance uh, visit, you do your physical exam, you get to look at imaging, uh, and what's nice is this, is this guides you through what needs to be done. And then all, there are also questions asked about the disease. You know, what's, what's, you know, what are some of the risk factors you can address? Um, when, you know, when do you want to see the patient again? And that said, uh, a month. And so it, it's really nice in guiding you through the important parts, because it's not only about the procedure. You have to know when to operate, when to uh, intervene. And that's where these early encounters come in. And then this is the second follow-up visit where the patient comes back and um, you know, the patient feels just fine because aneurysms are asymptomatic. Patients don't know they have them. But then when you go and look at the actual ultrasound uh, result, you can actually pull up images with the sizing. And they, you know, we ask you, has it gotten bigger, smaller? And it looks like the aneurysm has grown and it's surpassed the uh, the indication for, uh, for treatment, and this is just showing you how you can look at all the different history. You know, if you forget the history, you can go back and look at the history. So um, everything has uh, references as well as you can see here. Here's a CT. You notice it goes up on the ultrasound, so you order a CT scan. Uh, you have to identify how large it is, and then you have many treatment options. Is it going to be an open repair, endovascular repair? And his aneurysm was amenable to an endovascular repair, which is where the ultrasound guidance come in, comes in. And this is where you can literally kill patients if you don't do it right. So let's see if hopefully... Oh, yeah. This is uh, the virtual reality uh, module. This is a really fun part. This is where you put on the HTV uh, Vive headset, and uh, we have all the equipment. Um, this looks just like my lab, by the way. The team did an amazing job to just simulate what a typical endovascular suite looks like. And you can see that you're asked to, or you're guided through getting the right equipment. And the most amazing part, these, these hand-held devices are millimeter, uh, you know, they have amazing tolerance, you know, in terms of sensitivity. And so it's almost like a video game in terms of getting, keeping the ultrasound in the right plane and getting the needle in the vessel and uh, getting appropriate wire access. So I see a lot of great potential here because there are many, you may not, if you can learn the techniques to help prevent complications, uh, then you're going to, you'll have fewer complications. And so these simulations are incredibly valuable in my opinion. So uh, the last modules where the patient comes in for their, or you see the patient after the operation and you see them um, in the hospital and you ask them how they're doing, you do your exam. Um, and so it's, and then uh, there's also a question about, uh, you know, what's the surveillance now that you've completed the operation? So for, I think there's tremendous opportunity in simulations such as this to, uh, to help minimize complications. And now with ultrasound-guided access, this should be a never event uh, when you have a retroperitoneal hematoma, pneumothorax, things like that. These are things that are very preventable. So I'll hand it back to Clement. Thank you, Oliver. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So now there is more than that. And let me try to explain why this is really amazing and why this is a revolution to, for education. Um, because one word here. Yeah. First, it's digital, and when you speak about digital, it's open. And this is really our vision. We want anybody, patient, engineer, uh, health professional, of course, to help us 
to develop this content. And we want anybody to be able to access this content. Where it doesn't import if you are in, in your room, on a train, uh, in your bus. You can train, you can do these virtual clinical cases. The second one is sharing. And I think this is really amazing because this is really uh, our vision to be able to have the same quality of education. Whereas you are here in Stanford, in Europe, in Asia, in Africa, you can have access to the same quality of education. And you, as a doctor, you can share your knowledge to the whole world. Uh, I find it, it's, it's amazing. And this, the last word is update. Books are great, but books are expensive, and they don't update. And so if you are learning, on an old book with bad information, you are learning bad information. And ultimately, that will lead you to you, maybe earning a patient. I think we really have to work on the way we update our medical knowledge and uh, update our formation. And so really, that's it. That's what the Medical Active Platform is about. It's about the access and the diffusion of the medical knowledge all over the world. It's about improving the way we train our health professionals. It's about giving them the tools to practice their skill before they go to the real, real life. And more important, it's achieving better care for better patients. So now my, my part here is, is done. It's really up to you. It's your part now. Uh, if you think these tools can save life, if you think that you want to be involved. Well, join us to help create this content. Join us to help create these this virtual clinical cases. And it's really up to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So fantastic uh, presentation, very impressive. Uh, <coughs> tell us a little bit about um, the logistics about putting together a case, especially since there's some fairly impressive graphics. How is it done? What's the time effort, uh, especially for perhaps people who might not have a lot of curriculum design or instructional experience? Of course. Um, so I could, yeah, yeah, I you could, could give you... So what it took from my end, so I identify this as a very critical area where we should have, it should be a never event, a lot of the complications. And I even last week had to deal with a complication from uh, interventional cardiologist uh, resident mm -hmm. who wasn't using ultrasound guidance and ended up with an AV fistula in a patient and a pseudoaneurysm that we had to go in and repair. So just to get, so you have to identify the module. And after that, the team was amazing. They actually came in and took pictures, observed a case, mm -hmm. took pictures and video of the case to be able to emulate the setting. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it actually took quite a bit of work. I had a resident help me to really script the module to make it as realistic as possible. Yep. So it, there was, you know, effort involved. But the beautiful thing is now this can be replicated. Or it could just be copied and shared and used by everybody. So they can. So, so another so. author can clone it and change a variable in yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. it's, it's, it's getting easier and easier. But gotcha. um, actually, this is really our vision. We want to work with the people that are actually doing the thing. We want to work with them. We want to involve them. Because I think that if you're involved in making a virtual clinic case, that's the best way that you want to use it after. So this is really a good uh, example of what we want to do. Mm. Yeah. Very good, very good. Okay. Questions? Raise your hand and identify it. Yes, ma'am. Identify yourself, please. That's a very good question. So um, as you can see, because we have a booth uh, uh, just outside and you can try the virtual clinical cases, we are working with uh, HTC. And, um, and so like in September, like uh, in, in three months, four months, um, we are going to be able to make this multiplayer case. And I think this is re amazing because we, we were uh, talking <coughs> about teamwork. And that could be uh, very val valuable for the team to work together as, as a team to have five six people um, playing together. 
And um, in surgery, you could have the, the vascular surgeon and the anesthetist uh, working together with the patient mm -hmm. on, a, on a real surgery. So that's definitely something we are going to do in the next few months. Yeah, there's a very expensive simulation lab in the basement of this building where they do exactly that. They simulate, you know, they bring in the surgeons, anesthesiologists, students, scrub nurses, and try to simulate events. And but they have to perfect. be in the same place. Yeah, it's perfect for that. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. So Name, please. Um, I'm Fiji Kurok, I'm an anesthesiologist at Yale. Okay. Um, I worry a little bit about creation of specific cases because this is one thing. Yeah. The amount of time, resources, technology that was involved in the creation of this is phenomenal. I can't talk to you for you know, doing this. So this is one example <coughs> of an evolved case, right? And you're still Mm -hmm. to, to cover the entire curriculum. Okay. That's, a, that's a great question. And in fact, I was so amazingly impressed with the tactile, kind of the sensitivity of the device that I told the, the group that I work with, I said, you have to turn this into a game so that you can just make it an ultrasound guided access period. So it's not, you know, outside of EVAR. So I absolutely knew as an anesthesiologist, no, you're putting in IJs all the time and femoral lines and so on. Uh, so I, I think it's, there's tremendous opportunity, but you're right. And you know, in healthcare, that's, and, and when people, you know, everyone talks about workflow and workflows are extremely unique in every setting. And so you almost have to put in the work for my residents to get them interested and excited. And maybe it'll be different for anesthesiologists, but, um, but you're right. It is a lot of work, but you can take out these little modules, just the ultrasound access part and put it into a, you know, getting ready for a big cardiac uh, bypass case. For and example. the other thing is, not for virtual reality, but uh, for all the world uh, on counter, we have actually uh, a tool, and it, it allows you to actually go into the tool and build your own uh, cases without us. You do not need to know how to code, uh, all that stuff. It's like a game. You choose the avatar, you choose the content, the, all, all you can imagine, and you put that in the platform, and it's ready to use. You, you, we just check for the content to be scientifically accurate, and it's up to you. So that's one way to provide a lot of content very quickly. All right.